Hi, it's finally a show about what historians would call roommates. Two good friends. Two good friends who just live together, spend all their time together. Roommates. Andrew. And this is Katie's Toys. On today's MIA 80s Ladies, we're talking about a Star Wars show that people did not much like at the time, and I know it's hard to imagine, but go back, 1985, just, you know, not long after Return of the Jedi wrapped, Kenner, Lucasfilm even, were still eager to sort of, you know, like, milk that Star Wars cow, despite the fact that there were no movies in the future, so they dropped droids and Ewoks within the same time block on Saturday morning. Neither was well received. Uh, we're talking about probably the least received one, <laughs> Droids. Star Wars Droids was produced by Nelvana, a Canadian production company that's probably more famous for producing Care Bears. And that's really where your mind should sort of go. This is sort of, you know, cheap animation, a little more childish, uh, you know, not really you know, up to a Star Wars standard that we're used to now. Uh, it focused on C-3PO and R2-D2. A baffling pair, just the gayest Star Wars characters imaginable. Um, and it followed three different stories. The cartoon was shockingly serialized. You had to sort of watch each episode in order, in order to get the whole uh, story, which it just it didn't happen back then. Most things were very episodic. Um, the character we're going to talk about today is Jessica Mead, who's from the second and probably like less famous of these story arcs. Before we talk about Jessica, I would like to sort of give droids its due. They did have a, a woman in the first arc named Kia Maul. She was, uh, I wouldn't say intrinsic to the plot, but definitely like a new, you know, triumphant of heroes. And she was part of a resistance cell that would eventually go on to become a part of Rebel Alliance. And uh, her name, more than almost any other character from droids, is one that would keep on kind of popping up in novels and ancillary media. So, um, Interesting character, interesting look, very roguelike with the hair stripe. Uh, her figure is probably one of the ugliest in Kenner's history. It really followed the Han and Carbonite model of no neck. As I mentioned before, Jessica's from the second arc, and she uh, was a freighter captain, uh, someone with a, a very big, awkward ship and supposedly big, awkward jumpsuit. It was, you know, she got this nickname of old iron pants, which, if that's a tight suit, I'm a nun. I don't know what, you know, that's about. Um, much like Kia, she wasn't, I wouldn't say, integral to the plot, but she was someone who was very, very clever, very high, you know, EQ, if you will. She was someone who would kind of manipulate her way into situations or out of them, and we saw her kind of really figure out the pirate Kaibo Ren, not Kylo, Kaibo Ren, um, and really just read him to filth, really just sort of figure him out, use his own, you know, stupidity against him. So, fun in that way, and sort of like someone who really is, you know, relies on street smarts more than, you know, like, being scrappy. It's also worth noting, for very obvious reasons, that if you don't count Dion Carroll from the Star Wars Holiday Special, which I don't, Jessica would be the first black woman lead in Star Wars, and as we all know, the fans embrace all black women who come to their Star Wars. Just like with Ewoks, Kenner was the one in charge of making the droids action figures. They, they it was a pretty robust line for droids. Like the first wave was quite a few characters. I would say generally kind of focused more on the, you know, the heroes of the first arc, uh, and a few sprinkling of the second arc. The third arc didn't really factor in just quite yet. The designs are simple and cartoony. I mean, even by Kenner standards, these are very, you know, they try to be animation accurate. So they fit in with your vintage Star Wars figures, but not quite. They're still, you know, they're a style of their own. Wave two, of course, would have included Jessica. And usually, you know, again, I always sort of cry foul and say sexism, but Kiamal was part of the first wave and Jessica was sort of like a lot of characters in that wave, a lot of filler to, you know, build the ranks of the first part's villains and the you know, second part's heroes. So, you know, she fit there, frankly. Like, I mean, if the series had continued, if the toy line had been successful, if there was cash here, they would have gone forward. And frankly, like, I, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, this story structure isn't a bad idea. I mean, it, it's been sort of retroactively made 
four years after Revenge of the Sith, and maybe about 15 for A New Hope. So there is this like rich, you know, playground for 3PO and R2D2 to have been lost from Bail Organa's care and just sort of just go off and have wackadoo adventures um, with a new cast. And for, you know, a toy maker, that's great because you keep on, you know, churning out new characters all the time. So too bad. But at the same time, if you've watched it, too bad. Okay, the final verdict is good news, bad news here. So if you are a Star Wars collector since 1994's Power of the Force 2, uh, you'd be not surprised to learn that droids has not really, you know, kind of come up. Um, some would call it a call classic. I don't know who these people are. I have not met them. <laughs> that said, Hasbro has, at the very least, done a Black Series 6 inch homage a few years ago where they did 3PO, R2, and you know the droids Boba Fett, you know, in the simplistic colors with the card back and everything. Um, I would argue this was a cash grab. They love a repaint. They could have been testing the waters to see if droids was, you know, worth investigating. But here's my real point in this section. If you have ever watched a Star Wars Hasbro Pulse live stream, you know how awkward it is. It is like they are being held by gunpoint by Mickey Mouse himself. I mean, not to be inflammatory, but like, I know that these marketers are, you know, they're marketers, they're sculptors, they're, you know, they're, they're asked to be, you know, social media stars, and that's, that's not on them, but it's all the teams, it's all the people who've ever been on these live streams. You could tell that Lucasfilm and or Disney and or Hasbro are sitting in the room, staring them down, saying, you know, this is what must be done. We need repaints of clones, repaints of Mandalorians, the same churn over and over again. We are incredibly risk averse. We are incredibly money hungry. And so all we're going to do is the same thing over and over again. And this is a far cry, even from Kenner back in the day, where they're like, here's every alien we can manage to blast out. Even Kenner in the post Hasbro buyout, when Power of the Force 2 was new, they were just scrappy to do everyone that wasn't done before. Whereas now, Mandalorians, new content, nothing else. This might sound like an attack, or it might not sound surprising at all, but if you look on the flip side to the G.I. Joe live streams, that team has fun. You cannot fake that fun. You cannot fake that chemistry. And the fact is, Hasbro doesn't care what they do. Hasbro owns G.I. Joe. Hasbro doesn't take a cut from Disney. So as long as G.I. Joe's making money, they can do whatever they want. It's the Star Wars team. Y'all need to be making money. And if you have any inkling to have fun, to do a passion project, to do something fun like droids, and to say, hey, the fans have been asking for this, let's just do this cute little wave, smack down. I promise that wasn't the good news. The good news is, is that you can still get wave two. Uh, as always, the fans often do better work than Hasbro ever will. So if you want the full wave, including Jessica, you can go over to talk to Mark at Pro Custom Figures. He has an eBay store. I'll send a link to his uh, actual like web store in the bio below. Uh, it's great. I've not bought this wave because I'm not really a big droids fan, but I have bought uh, General Dodonna. I've gotten his, you know, Celebration three pack. Great stuff. Um, and I think that's probably your best option. There's no one else is gonna make this, but this is the kind of best news in my case. If you know me from these videos, you know I'd love a, a modern recreation, you know, them making these women characters with more articulation, more whatever. But the real juicy goodness I like is when they, they go hard and go in the retro. Like we're looking at the cell with sectors, we're looking at uh, trick or treat with Toxic Crusaders, where they actually make the original figure that was supposed to be made and just introduce it to a whole new audience. That's what I love. So the fact that Mark's doing just the wave as it was meant to be, love it. As I always say, you know, time of recording, you never know. You never know at San Diego Comic Con, they might throw it at Jessica Mead or a George Three Packer. Who knows? I mean, they've been sprinkling things out. They made, you know, Mara Jade and Jaina Solo figures who aren't even part of canon anymore. They've done Dr. Afro, who's probably better known from comics. All these characters share the same bodysuit that either Kia or Jessica could wear in a future figure. So it's not totally off the table. I, I, it would be a pleasant surprise. 
uh, and I'd, I'd probably buy them, to be honest. But I don't like to be, like, so dour, but, you know, it, there's potential for, you know, your, your fancy, you know, six-inch one. I would always recommend the Retro. The Retro Collection is doing great stuff. The vintage figures are by far my favorite, and there is more, mostly by fans, being produced all the time. So I, I you have options, um, and possibly more in the future. And with that ramblingness, we're done here. Uh, thank you for watching. I promise you we will get to Ewoks, but we'll never talk about droids again. You have my word. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you next time on Gaby's Toys.